Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast, and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. We're going through names. Okay, I like it. Kate Neckel. Joseph Arthur. Mike McCready. Yes, Mike McCready's a cool name. Is that a good name? It's fuck yeah, dude. I like it. It works. That's a good one. It works, right. Come on, you know it is. No, I like it. I like it. Mick. Mick. Mick means Mike son McCready. of or something like that. No. <laughs> what are we doing? I'm gonna def. Can I do a little art while we're yeah, talking? Of course. Okay, great. Cool. You have to. That's amazing. I love the Polaroids. Have such a such a great look. It was like this looks like freaking like 1969. Yeah. I know. You're opening up for Zeppelin, or you're in Zeppelin. Yeah. Right there. Cause with that with that telly, it looks like this. Sweet. Cool. I like that guitar. Yeah. 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 That guitar's amazing. So, well, we're here with Mike McCready and Kate Neckel. Hi, Joseph. Formerly Hi. Kate Creedon. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And the infinite, uh, infinite color. color and sound yes, project. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? It's an awesome project. And, You're in uh, it. I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you for texting and wanting us to be on the podcast because that turned yeah. into you being part of the show. I know. It's perfect. And it's, it's Make that mic a little closer. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, there you right. go. And uh, I, I like this concept that you guys are somehow portals to each other to like overcome fears that you've had about you being a, becoming a visual artist, mm -hmm. which to me, like just I don't know you that well, but I know you a little bit. And the little bit I know you, this is like such a great thing that you're doing because I feel like your artist spirit is really blossoming in this way. I, I thank you. I feel like that that is happening, Joseph, and Kate has brought that and this project has brought that out in me um, in terms of, you know, looking at the guys, my bands that, that do art, that Jeff Amet, who you do stuff Big with time too. With Jeff. He's and you guys, I look at you guys and how, and, and at Arcade and how, how easy it seems to paint or draw yeah. to you. It may not be, but from, in my mind, it seems, a, it seemed a million miles away to me. And yeah. This seems it's it's getting a little closer now. I can, I feel a little more comfortable doing it. It's right there. It's yeah. it's there. Yeah. yeah. And it um and it was just because you kind of grew up intimidated by artists because your mom was an art teacher. I don't know if that I just was held them. It may it she opened me up to art and all that. So it, it was more like you know of course holding Warhol or um, mm -hmm. Monet or all of at such an esteemed level that you're just kind of on such a pedestal that why would you know I like Van Halen. So, and, and yeah. I like rock and music and get, that was easy. That was the, that, that's where my brain went. So this other stuff was in an unattainable beauty to me. Right. Um, not, so, and I think I just had that story. I told myself that I couldn't do it for a long time. Interesting. It's, it's also a psychological journey for me. Yeah. Oh guessing, yeah, you know. totally. I mean, all of art is, but then you have the you know, inverse fear about music. Yeah. I mean, I always... I felt, um, I remember being in third grade or something, and it was the day to try out for choir. Yeah. And I was just so overcome with, I don't know. I, music always made me feel so much emotionally. Like, I would cry at uh -huh. a Motown song. You know, I just would yeah. feel it. And you, I, I was overwhelmed. I was, and I called my mom. I was like, I'm sick. I can't try out for choir. You know, and I just couldn't do it. And I've always loved um you know, I, I love music. I've collaborated before with musicians, painted on the guys in the band Honduras. I've always wanted to do something like what I'm doing with Mike, but I never thought, you know, my wildest dreams that I'd be writing music and playing music. Were you two in, the, in New York at the same time? I'm wondering in terms of art circles. Well, and I moved here in 2000. Okay. So I've been here, been here about forever. 25 years. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I was in any kind of art circles. I don't know. I don't mean to paint you in a uh, paint you into a corner. Did um, you no. guys know each other? I mean, so that's my. I, it, you were I, here at both in New York at the same time. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that was kind of what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah, but why do you think it is that certain people give themselves permission to do one thing and not another thing? Like, what do you think the root of that is? That fear or that intimidation? Because, you know. It's like there is no sort of entry. There's no guest pass you're given. You just decide. Yeah. I remember when I wanted to be a painter, I just went to the art store and bought a canvas and paints. Mm -hmm. And that felt like a revolutionary act. It wow. just It felt wild because yeah. of that. Because you're opening up a portal or something. Yeah. 
I, I, I love that. For me, I couldn't get to that step. Of right. Like, I'm going to go. It's basic. It's the, the, the paint paints and going to an art store is so overwhelming. And right. I, it's probably like just, oh, I'm not good enough kind of thing. That, and, a, and a story that I would tell myself over and over and over again. You mm -hmm. know, and that's not only with certain art, but whatever, you know, with yeah. fear or courage or life in general. But yeah. um, it, it was just maybe how I was raised. I don't, I do not know. But I didn't ever have that fear with music. I mean, music was just the obsession and it went far and exciting. And, but the other, I guess, I don't know why, you know, it's, I don't know what that reason is, but yeah. I'm exploring that now. Yeah. Not caring anymore. What? She's made me not care about not being able to, to, to not care about worrying about it, I guess. Right, and what, do you th sense? what about her has opened that door for you? I, th I, it has to be the first time we played, you came over and you started painting in the basement and then I was playing guitar and we were trying this whole thing out for the first time and then we switched and she started playing chords and then I just held the, the, the paintbrush and I went, what do I do? <laughs> I really did, it's like, what do I do? I was terrified of being judged, mm -hmm. um, of like being mocked probably, mm -hmm. probably, mm -hmm. you know. So and it, all of that was in there. And that could be a, like a whole Seattle weird thing too. Like this, yeah. like everybody's so, so sarcastic, judgy. so judgy yeah. and sarcastic. Who do you think you are, uh, painter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That type of shit. Totally. Yeah. Like, no, we, none of us in bands want to make it because it's not cool to say that, which is total BS. But So yeah. I probably bought into all of that. And right. her not kind of saying anything, just saying, hey, just put it on the paper. I was like, I was like oh, just put it down. It was, it was your painting. Revel yeah. Revelatory? Revelatory? Right. <laughs> yeah, revelatory. Yeah. Like what you were saying when you went there the first time. It yeah. Was that kind of a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah. Freedom. What's great about this is like for other people to hear that somebody like you, Mike, would be so intimidated to start yeah. painting because, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's just it's cool, I think, for people to hear that everyone has those blocks yeah, sure. because then they can over. It's inspiring. Yeah. You know, it's like the Ramones making punk rock and then everybody thinking, hey, I can do that. Yeah. Because I remember the first art show I wrote, because I never went to college. I, I had the opposite, no artistic um, sort of background whatsoever. And I always painted when I was a kid and I kind of never stopped. But I remember this girl invited me to go to Alabama to go see an art show, right? And I was living in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. Okay. And for me, a museum show was always just like boring renaissance paintings where I would go to sleep like oh my god I don't want to do that but I had a crush on this girl of course mm. so we, we I said <laughs> yes and we went to Alabama drove to Alabama in her car and the show was a Basquiat retrospective oh, and it too. blew my fucking mind because I, I went in there and I was like you didn't know anything about him at the time I, no I didn't yeah. know anything and I, and I just saw a whole museum of his collected mm -hmm. life's work that Madonna put on oh my Crazy. God. and it, it I was like you mean this can be in yes. a fucking museum like yeah. what, I can do this yes. yeah. like it was that Ramones mm -hmm. I can yes. do this you know yeah. and and Ever since then, that's when I went and got a canvas mm -hmm. and paints, yep. and I was started, you know. And is it, were you playing music at that time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was bass player, you know. Right. I don't know if I started singing yet. When did you combine know. the two? That was like, I just, I would, I would get off the road, and, and at that point, I like painted enough to where my album covers started to be paintings and stuff, so I was taking, and then people were responding to my paintings, like taking me a little bit seriously, more yeah. seriously than I took myself. Oh. Right. And I was like, wow, these people think I'm actually know what, I'm the, yeah. know what I'm doing, like this is crazy. Yeah. And then I was on a painting uh, jag or whatever you call it at home before a tour, and I was like super into what I was doing, and I didn't want to stop. So I was like, I'm gonna take painting on the road. I'm gonna set up canvases behind the stage. And I'd set up a big canvas. Wow. And it was at the Troubadour in wow. LA. And that was the first time I ever painted live. And I remember it was like so nerve wracking to do it live in front of people. And I, I went on and painted right before the show started. And then I painted as I was walking off to the encore. And that Amazing. was it. Then the next day, an interviewer said, so I heard you're painting and singing at the same time. And I was already looping. Yeah. But I was like, it, that gave me the idea. That's when the light bulb went off when the journalist asked me that. Because I was like, 
I wasn't painting and singing at the same time, but I could. <laughs> yeah. But I could. Well, see, you and have that's when, and that's when, and then, then I could do a yeah. chord progression and, and paint and yeah. sing. That's when I started doing that. There's a there's. I wonder if there's some sort of a gene or anything that to, that, that in you that says, oh, but I could do it. You know. Yeah. I didn't have that. Oh, but I could do it. Right. Gene. I feel I, with guitar and music, I felt I yeah. had that because yeah. I played with a bunch of people when I was a kid, but. I feel right. like I didn't. I wouldn't be able to jump. Oh, I can do this too, and and then then follow through on it. And that's when yeah. I saw that a bit. But at PJ Twenty, when you did that, it was like, oh wow, he's doing all that. How yeah. does he do it? You know. Yeah, but you and are then, doing it now. now yes, doing exactly. It. I'm just trying to get back to the old psychology, yeah. and I just yeah. Yeah. Get away from that psychology, and now mm -hmm. we're in the new. Now so. you're doing it. Yeah. Yesterday, when we were playing live, or whatever, you actually were playing and painting at the same time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's happening. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, and if you got uh, a looper. Yeah. I know I do. I do have one. And I'm just starting to learn how to do that. I've yeah, like the looper thing would in, would free you up because then you could do a layer and then paint while your layer's going. We practiced that way a little bit, yeah, and we then did we. That. Winston then, at the gallery show. Did we yeah, move? we did it there. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. I had a friend of mine kind of running it, so mm -hmm. I'm yeah. gonna learn it and do that. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, you know the looping. I heard it. I heard you doing it. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. But and also you're doing it live, which is an extra layer of courage. Even if somebody's yeah, I was already a painter before I painted live, and like that was super vulnerable. So like, tell me about like the first time you did that versus how you feel about doing it now. And you too, Kate. Mm -hmm. um, well, the first time we did it uh, at the at, in front of an audience was at this place called the Winston Walker Gallery in Seattle, and. It was a whole world for me to step into. It's like, there's, this is the art world or, or this world that, you know, and I'm not making, saying that in a facetious way or anything. It was just this different thing. And there's parameters or not parameters necessarily, but there's an art gallery thing. Right, because we made a whole body oh. of work oh, for yeah. the show. For so, the show. Yeah, so we had a gallery filled with our artwork and then we did a live performance. I see. For, parameters for isn't three the right nights. word. But, but it was an interesting thing. We were duct taped to the wall and I'm painting and there's we had people came and and it just it flowed and it was yeah. nerve wracking and fun and, and freeing, exciting and, and freeing and, and yeah. like I and I panicked about it but I also loved it so I, I it was a myriad of all these emotions mm -hmm. I guess to, so and and as comparatively tonight I I have a little bit of that but I I feel pretty confident and kind of excited about it now because we're in New York and it's kind of a I feel like that's a cool thing and a big deal and yeah and yeah. I I feel because Kate's I feel like we we know what we're doing. So, and 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 you're a part of this, so it's going to be all cool. Yeah, so, I just think it's yeah. awesome the way you guys are bringing out each other's like uh, you know other talents. Mm -hmm. Alternate. That's a mm -hmm. that's a cute dynamic. It's yeah. very I sweet, and it's very it, rare. And I'm so grateful for it because it's not a normal yeah. situation. When I met him, it was like immediately like that's my person to do this with. You know. Yeah. Art, so, mm -hmm. art yeah. soulmates. It's like my person, yeah. Yeah. And well, how'd you guys meet? Mike's wife, Ashley, actually saw, <clears throat> saw my work first. Um, and she commissioned me to do a piece for their home. Mm -hmm. And um, during that process, or I guess Mike actually, Ashley saw the work, then Mike didn't see it. And so then Ashley was like, you got to go to the gallery and see some uh, paintings that I had up. And Ashley kept talking about She's it. Like, She's like, Kate, Kate, you got to check out Kate, 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 Kate you know. And so then Mike uh, came to see the work and he wanted to know the story behind every painting and really was drilling me about like, what does this mean? Why did you do this? Da -da 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 and he was like, it's true. <laughs> did you have explanations? I, had, I told him the full story behind each one. I really I, did. It's funny because I don't, I don't ever look at painting that way. I don't want to know the, when I go to art museums, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to read the thing and tell me, I don't think that way, but some reason I wanted to know what, you want to know the story. I want to know what was behind the, the paintings and why it was. But what, generally, why? I want art just to show me. Or to, I just want to feel what art yeah. tells tells me at that moment immediately. I don't really know. You I, don't, don't I know. mean, I was I loved her art. I liked it, and yeah. I think it was I related to her, her just meeting her the, immediately, and we were talking about Warhol and all sorts of stuff, and and then I just thought, and I felt at that time that like, oh my god, am I being a total pain in the ass of like, what, tell me what that means and what does this mean and you know. <laughs> Because I, I, I didn't want to, because that's a strange question, like, what I think, mm -hmm. to, at times, why did you do it, or what, what's the meaning behind it? No, I liked it so much, though, because... I know, never do that, though, and I did it with you. Yeah, so. no, mm -hmm. you do. Yeah, because it could come off as intrusive, I guess. Yeah. Or, yeah. And maybe I don't want to know. Maybe I would just want the art to explain. Yeah. But I did want to know for some reason. 
don't know. It also seems like on some level too, you're creating a similar excitement to maybe you had when you first started playing guitar in bands, like the unknown. Yeah. Like as we get older, we have to like sort of throw ourselves into uncomfortable situations to keep our keep muse fresh. like yes. engaged. You know? No, it's a total new inspiration for me too, especially as I, I sometimes say it's like a, finding a new aisle in the art store. Yeah. You know, like, whoa, I didn't know. Like now with writing songs and playing music with Mike and it's just like, I feel like I've been cracked open in a new way and I'm 43 and I, you know. It's I spring, spring chicken still. Baby yeah. chicken. Yeah, Begin. baby chicken yeah. because, uh, well, you are here in Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. That old first self-help guy or no. from the 30s. No. no. Yeah, well, he's got a book called Think and Grow Rich, and it talks about how our prime is between 40 and 60. Is the is a, is a human being's most productive wow. years. Yeah, that's and that was back in the 30s or whatever. Completely against what society kind of says. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's like if you're already, so. you yeah. know, yeah, like... Yeah, you could you could be tricked into thinking, oh, it's done for me now, but it's not. No, it's, it's like just you're, you're in your prime. And his theory behind that is because you've had the experience and you've been through stuff, or is I it, guess, yeah. yeah, you know who you are at that point, and then you, but you still have enough youthful energy and yeah. and all the rest of it. So, how did? Um, can I ask you a question? Sure. That sounds rad to there. Yeah, um, there's cool sound <laughs> of Polaroids being snapped for the people just listening. <laughs> There's some Andy Warhol vibes going on yeah, definitely here. Definitely some, some things going on with the Polaroid. Yeah. And yeah. How did, um, how did uh, Peter Gabriel discover you? I gave my demo tape. I was in Atlanta back mm -hmm. then, and, and I had just started writing songs on an acoustic guitar. And you were living in Atlanta at the time? Living in Atlanta, okay. yeah. Working at a guitar shop called Clark Music. I okay. don't know if you ever went through there. I don't think so. But, <clears throat> but uh, and then, yeah, I, I made a tape. I gave it to... Um, so a friend of mine who was in a 12 step program that mm -hmm. I was going to heard of those. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> um, I know all about those yeah. programs. So <laughs> I was already in one of those back then. I was like in my early twenties and I gave my tape to just a, a buddy of mine in it, you yeah. know, and he gave it to an A&R guy from Capricorn records that was also in that 12 step program. Okay. And that guy, where's Capricorn the, records? Is that, that was like a Southern label. Like, oh. a, uh, I forget what bands, Yeah. I, but, uh, yeah, like not like, not the almond brothers, but like that type. Can, can, yeah. I remember that. Is it not Skinner? No, but, but that, something that like that. Okay. Yeah. And so then he sent it to a, a, a guy in New York who used to work for Peter Gabriel. <clears throat> and then it got to Peter Gabriel. It was random. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Speaking of another one of your oh, yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Jeff Amon. <laughs> yes. RNDM. Yeah. Right R -N -D -M. on. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Richard. Yeah. So um, you love Andy Warhol, huh? I do. You know, I love that. I, 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 it was, you know, imprinted early on me, pop, uh, Lichtenstein and pop art and things like that. As a, as a young kid, my mom would bring home these projects that she'd been working on, and they'd have the month of Lichtenstein or a month of this and that. And it just spoke to me in this American, like, oh, this mass consumerism, but yet there's this, there's a, that's art, too. It can be. That, mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting that, that a soup can is, can be art, and, and then that, that people would think that that wasn't art at the time or... I, it just spoke to me. I love the probably love the colors initially, but then I love the Polaroid thing, and I, you know, I do that all the time because the of him, and love, of course, love the Velvet Underground, and I love his whole mixture mixture of you know, it's a fantasy of what I think that world was. Yeah, like the thing that I never could be part of, I want to be part of. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Um, Paris in the twenties, or it's, I don't know if that's being too psycho. I, don't be, I, I just I I look at that era of his his work. Even his early stuff and the darker stuff is it's just something that, that would have been cool to be around while it was going on. Yeah. But I also still like it, you know. I, yeah. I don't know if that answers it right, but yeah. yeah, I do like his stuff and always wanted to do something that combined. And that was the conversation that Kate and I were having at the gallery that one day. Let's do something that's that's that's, that's mixed media, um, you know, a factory type thing, but not too derivative of it. My original thought was being more derivative of the mm -hmm. Andy Warhol factory, but. It turned into this other thing that we're yeah. talking about now, which is better. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the, uh, where, where do you see this going? I mean, the possibilities are infinite. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> we uh, we kind of take it thing by thing, you know, we, 
I don't know. I mean, I'd like to record. We we put out three singles. Is that what you say of our the uh, hockey talker things that we did? Yeah, we did some. So we put out some singles um, on on my little label, and what they are is me doing music to her painting, and the paintings are part of the artwork that are on that. So that's okay. that's just music. Right. And, and but so we've I'm also saying, I, yeah, songs. we have songs now, and I mean, a little dream of mine would be to record those songs. And yeah. those are songs that she plays guitar. She wrote on guitar and wrote all the lyrics. And uh -huh. this is rad because it's a whole new world for you and it's because really cool because of him and then he'll, like i'll play around with something i'll be like what should i and he's like no just keep feeling it keep doing what you're doing and i he's like a yoda guiding <laughs> spiritual force you know like yeah. we will have like some time apart and then i'll be like here's this thing and he's like you know he'll add his she has a natural kind of songwriting ability and a rhythm and stuff like that which mm -hmm. i don't want her to think about and just just that's i think that's what you're talking about yeah. like don't yeah don't try to I, just like with painting yeah. is feel, don't think, take feel your head it, yeah. off, you know, don't think about it. But anyway, um, I'd like to record that music. Um, and we'll do some of those songs tonight. And we'll do some of those yeah. songs tonight for this performance. And, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just super fun, like, coming here. I, what I love about this project is that we get to collaborate with other artists and musicians mm -hmm. and people that want to play around with us, like with Josh and the Chili Peppers, and we're going to... And you, and you, sir. You know, this is, like, this is so fun. Yeah. And, it's it's so it's rad because you can be part of this collective and it's it's this is the art too that's going on and yeah. it's not just it's just you know what I mean you're, right you're you're bringing your influence into us and it'll be something different tonight because of that so and I, I, that's exciting to me is the what 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 is that what is you it? know yeah. yeah and I love your stuff so I I have this confidence in terms of what your your abilities are so it's in in and and i and i can't wait to like kind of ride that wave of where you're going to so yeah me too it it's makes perfect sense yeah. when you it, think about it it's yeah like, like you said when you were on stage like what, what did you say that you were confident uh if somebody said somebody said it makes sense and i'm like yeah, yeah i even think it makes sense like my self-doubt can't my even self -doubt, stomp, yeah. stomp on that <laughs> yeah it yeah. seem like you have yeah. self-doubt yeah. to me joe no oh, mike really? sent me your stuff like, and i was immediately like <laughs> yeah. he's in like a million yeah. percent like okay. and i was like this is our person <laughs> yeah awesome and yeah. he likes to take his shirt off too and run yeah. around and I we did, get paint yeah. on that you yeah. know <laughs> i was just like this guy he's the mannequins he's you know all that stuff the art the music it's yeah I, lo I just love this whole like encouraging people to go like look if you take a chance and you and you open yourself up to new things then like you just take it you just sort of guide it a little bit and then the whole world can open up in so many different ways yeah, like, yeah. it's a year ago like, your own this universe. is a one year anniversary it was like a year ago because it was ashley's birthday mm -hmm. when i had my show at the gallery you know it's like this has all happened within a year you know wow it's That's it's right. crazy you know yeah. Yeah, well, it doesn't take much time if you have, like, the sort of spirit guiding mm -hmm. you and yeah. behind you. It's crazy. And we were both initially so, like, oh, should we try this? I remember being, you know, just we had that conversation about Warhol and our idea. And then I was like, okay, do you want to try it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I just brought the roll of canvas over to the And street. that's where it kind of got out of the thing. Oh, let's get, in my mind, I was, well, the Mylar balloons and the whole thing that he did in the factory. And then right. and when this happened, it was like, well, maybe he's already done that. And he did it let's great. Let's do our so let's, thing. Yeah. Let's just follow where this goes. And, and take it more like an audience-based sort of thing. But after doing it live a few yeah. times, yeah, th that was initially, um, I, I felt, I didn't know if I thought about an audience thing until we did it. And then that, that changed it because it, when we, we can plan out everything on our little paper, piece of the paper, <laughs> but that Make changes, the drawings. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that changes as you know, you know, I, I, it, w ga gauging on what the audience's reaction is or what I feel like walking out there doing or what music you're going to play on the guitar or what you know it's it all changes in the night so and that's that's the aspect that is that that's gotten exponentially bigger i think mm -hmm. is the audience factor yeah and how kate what do you think about painting in a studio versus painting live in terms of like yeah what, what how does that affect your work no i mean when i feel when i'm painting by myself you know it's I'm moving based on what I'm feeling or what I'm trying to say. And when I'm painting with Mike or you tonight, I usually, it's like I feel like my paintbrush is plugged into the amp uh -huh. or into his 
guitar like it all becomes like one long arm extension it's like mm -hmm. guitar neck into paintbrush and i just feel like i'm guided and kind of like this trance by what he's doing it's very connected mm -hmm. and so um it's like i'm working it's this collaboration that happens where i'm guided by mike we kind of just like click in or with yeah. you, you know it's like you just kind of click into this different uh flow and yeah. it's really beautiful and the audience too. I, when I do it, like, because I, I, I notice, like paintings I do by myself have a very different vibe than paintings I do live. Yep. And I kind of sometimes like the live ones even better. It feels like the audience, similar to like a live show versus a studio yeah. recording. Mm -hmm. It's very similar in that way. Like in terms of how you're painting and the brush strokes and the it's yeah. more expressive or is yeah, it, it's well, just how do you maybe freer and looser. Sometimes you get I don't know. Like it feels to me like when you paint in front of an audience the energy of the audience somehow gets on the canvas wow for sure i like that yeah do you go out with a preconceived thought of what you will paint that night or does that happen naturally i sometimes yeah. do i sometimes have like a vague idea of how i want to start okay but like when i'm doing it Could usually you give me an example of that well usually like oh i'll do like oh i got an idea for a figure i want to put in it and then i'll do that but then it's so kind of quick too because usually i do it over one song right. and so just grabbing things like really fast and like mm -hmm. squeezing a tube and also i'm singing at the same time too so yeah. it's like it'll just like yeah it just feels like the energy of the audience somehow gets on it because the there's also nerves involved yeah. like i need to make there's the pressure of i need to make this work now yeah i can't like you know mess around a little bit then like sit on my couch and scroll through netflix and <laughs> right. look over at the my mess with resentment and then you know I'll take care of that tomorrow you know <laughs> watch another episode like of frazier right. <laughs> i've only seen this one five times yeah, yeah. <laughs> how hard is it for you to walk away from a painting since it's limited on the length of the song mm -hmm. if if you feel it needs more and you just have to let go it's amazing what money will do to like make me not worry about that. <laughs> right. I mean, that sounds harsh, but I'm in just in terms of just. I'm just saying, if, yeah. like, usually if they sell, if I sell it afterwards, I feel like it's a good one, and like you yeah. know, like mm -hmm. it, it works. Because it's know? part of the experience. Yeah, it's part of the experience. Someone that buy it will go. I was at that show. Yeah. And they will always have that piece, that, yeah. that piece of work and yeah. that experience. Uh -huh. that goes along with it is that what you're saying yeah and then i'll like take them on the road and and sometimes sell them like at other gigs or whatever but then um if they hang around too long then i'll start working on them again mm -hmm. like, really yeah sometimes like i'm like do oh do you do that depends i cheat right. yeah like, yeah i mean i don't is think it's cheating but i don't do it on the no ones that we do yeah but like i'll have paintings that i'll sit and look at for a while and then touch them again can I jump in on that for a second? So, oh, and yeah, after, dude. Uh, so <laughs> what is it because does it do you forget about the painting and then you get back to it and go, oh, I could have done that, or if I now it's like a week later and you feel these different feelings, and you want to add those feelings to the new painting to the same the painting that you were working on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine's more mental, I think, and not so feeling based. It's more like, oh, I see what I, I see something. And if, if something's hanging around a lot, I get sick of looking at it and then I want to mess with it or like things will suggest themselves to me. When do you know it's time to stop? Uh, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, it's similar to like working in a recording studio too. Yeah. Like when do you know when it's time to stop? You could keep going forever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But it doesn't, you know from experience, that doesn't make it better no. usually. It just makes it different. Yeah. Mm. Or it gets, it, or there's too much stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, or too yeah. much. Yeah. How do you, how about you? When do you know when does? It's just like, yeah. you know, you're like, that's it. Like, I, yeah. I usually it's a feeling of like, I just don't want to do anything else. It just tells you. Just like, a book ends. I usually just know. Huh. Sometimes I'll hear you say... Oh, it needs the, one more thing. Or the, yeah, or it's the, the balance is mm -hmm. off from the top and the bottom. Yep. Am I interpreting that right? Like, mm -hmm. there's too much up here or something? And Yeah, like when that, we did that Mellotron shots, that first one, you're like, okay. We're, and then I said, no, there's something here. So you played a little bit more Yeah, then that, that's where that, that, that is interesting to me. Like, why yeah, is it that? was just a feeling. I, we The first painting yeah. we made together, canvas rolled out on his floor in the studio and he was playing guitar this and we worked for maybe an hour or it was, seemed like a long time yeah. and then we kind of looked up and he's like what do you think and then i was like i just need a few more touches here and he was like how do you know that and i'm like i just 
and it's I just know that it's composition. Yeah, it's comp- yeah it just I, it's talking to me. It just tells you. It talks to you. Yeah. Do you feel that way too? That yeah, way? I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, it's just kind of like it's weird because painting is hard to talk about. Just like think yeah. like mm-hmm. music is hard to talk about because they kind of exist in this place language can't really reach. Mm-hmm. You know. So I guess it's just it's magic. Yeah, it's just like yeah. something that's like suggesting itself or something or, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. Like sometimes I'll see like modern painters or something that like just do like, oh, this is just one spray paint line. <laughs> and I like that shit. I'm, <laughs> like I always I, like I, I'm not one of those people like that's not My art. My child could do that. Yeah. Right. right. Like no, I'm always no, kind of like, right. man, how did they keep it that fucking minimal? Yeah. You know, it's like. It's a very clear decision. It's like, this is where. Yeah. Like the ACDC of painting or something. Or like, like. Yeah, I guess chords, so. Yeah. Three chords of a painting. I don't know. Yeah. It's going to be a bad example. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Did, that, did, I, just, did I just kill us? Oh, no. Did I just kill us? Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. There was a point to this, I promise you. Do you think it erased it? No, the file should be there. It probably just needs to be. Uh, Can I just fucking erase uh, everything? Just need to be. Uh, Recovered or something. I'll figure it out. Oh fuck me! Don't that worry did about not it. Happen. Figure oh, it out. Figure did it did out right it. now, real quick. No, no, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's now or later. Don't worry about it. It's there. Are you sure? Are we sure it's there? It'll be there. I want to know, don't you guys? <laughs> yeah, let's know, because that was stupid of me to It'll do that. It'll be there. I apologize. I wanted to bring a mannequin over while we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I need this. Yeah. All right. Well. God, that was. Why did I do that? <laughs> Oh my god. We might have to redo it. No, just keep going. Don't worry about it. Is it in there? It'll be in the files. Uh, the mm. files. There has to be a way to uh, oh fix a file. That just check it real quick while we're thinking yeah. about it. Because it'll, it'll drive us nuts yeah. in our head. <laughs> just like press play real quick. You, well, no, it'll have to be like restored it. yeah. and recovered. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Oh, you think so? Just stay ready. Yeah. Okay. Then why don't we sound pause check. for a second? Go to the. Oh, wait. Let's we'll talk. Like right. finish. Right. Do you want to finish your right. thought? Yeah, I want so to like, finish your right, thought real quick. Are we? Are you recording the cameras? Yeah, that's nonstop. Yeah. Oh, great. oh, because they weren't on the electric. No, they're not. Oh, okay. If they do make some noises, that okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we might be just starting over right now too. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll finish the thought on Duchamp and then we'll like, uh, and then we'll see. It's it'll, all good, guys, man. It'll be okay. Great. It's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to go get a mannequin, and it's going to make a lot of sense for the whole interview. I feel less lonely, though. Okay. So. Uh, I know. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like I just let everyone down. All right. So, anyways, we'll continue. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Anyway, I was just going to say that the mannequins evolved out of, you know, in my studio, I had this arm sitting on the floor, a mannequin arm uh-huh. sitting around, and Mike was like, I don't know. We, we we it went from one arm to like oh it would be cool to get some mannequins, yeah, not one that, mannequins arm, like yeah. one thousand mannequins like we had so many mannequins. If one's and good, then, then let's get ten. Yeah, you know, so that we kind of like we had so many mannequins, but then we also had like window frames. We just had all these other found objects that we kind of would incorporate and painted and, on and, and put dice uh, or dye. Yeah. Whatever, you know, Mike has artifacts around his studio very Duchampian Mm -hmm. uh, sort of vibe so we're all about kind of like this is art now and we're gonna play with it and it's our new toy because he was like the first one to kind of do that Mm -hmm. like he's sort of like you know precursor to Warhol really exactly and like I'm fascinated because I don't know anything about this. Well, he's the guy that did the toilet. You've seen that. The arm mutt that's like just a urinal. In a gallery. In a a gallery. Like just a toilet. And he wrote arm mutt on it. You know why he did arm mutt? I I know, but I can't remember right now. It's because it was was for like a, a contest, like an art contest. And he was one of the judges of it. Mm-hmm. So he had to hide his identity on the piece. Oh. Like, so he, 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 he made up the artist R. Mutt. <laughs> and that's what he signed it as. But the funny thing is about that is he, he thought it would be sort of like, you know, like create a bunch of turmoil. And it basically just kind of got ignored. Yeah, was like like oh. no, nobody really gave a shit and nobody really like talked about it. Mm-hmm. It was like a super letdown. Oh, wow. Across, so it, it gained... 
it gained a lot of fame over the years, but it didn't start off like it wasn't like an explosive thing. Because uh-huh. like, that guy, like he, he was like a tutor. He like taught like English or whatever to make a living. Like he wasn't well off or anything like that. Okay, so I uh, I'm excited to learn more. This is I don't what know. we do. Like he'll yeah. show me, he'll pull out records. He has this amazing vinyl collection, and I've gained this whole new music history knowledge and then i'm like hey check out this you know uh, yeah that's art. you know we pass things back and like forth what's some of the things he's passed to you oh gosh um i feel like what comes to i mean it depends we would sit down there and like one day there was the a tom petty uh the insider, insider song. i yeah. had never listened to insider and it was do you know that song Insider? Uh, not off Him the top and of my Stevie head. Nicks. Stevie Nicks. It's so oh, beautiful. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. It's, yeah, just cool, beautiful dark duet. Song. And it was yeah. just like, yeah. it's a rainy Seattle day. And then he put that on. And then we got into the whole Graham Parsons, yeah. Flying Burrito Brothers thing. Mm-hmm. And then we'll, you know, and I knew, he just has such a knowledge of. As you do of that part of art, I, music, I just. And the Rolling Went Stones down that and, road. You know, every yeah. I mean that could replacements. Be a whole other podcast. Replacements. Yeah. Cheap, cheap yeah. trick. Cheap trick for sure. You know, yeah. that uh a lot reg- of here, here comes, comes a regular. regular yeah. Jinx. D- wow. D- 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 That's a great one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite music to paint to outside of the live music that Mike makes? Um that's a good question. You know it's I was uh, when I made my work for my last solo show or whatever, I was randomly listening to a lot of Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I like hip hop to listen to. It's interesting. I yeah, um, his flow and his, you know he's a poet, and I, mm-hmm. I really got into listening to a lot of his. Are you I talking about to Damn? Dam and then also um, some of his earlier stuff? But yeah, Damn was on repeat. Damn was huge for so me. So good, that like one feel I... and element, like DNA. Although I yeah. just was obsessed with that album, and I had like his picture on my wall when I was list- when I was creating my last show. Yeah. So. Kendrick. It, it's very random, but yeah. It invokes a warrior spirit. It does. That music. Yeah. What do you? How do you think this project's gonna affect your music coming forward? I think it's gonna affect it a lot in yeah. terms of my confidence in doing stuff with our band. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with with Pearl Jam has been. I, I think I've felt intimidated over the years, you know, in terms of we were talking about art and, you know, I look at Jeff and he did, does great art for our stuff and Ed does it. And I, again, getting into that mindset that I've had for many years, um, I feel like I don't, I'm not worrying about that anymore. I'm kind of like, okay, maybe I have an idea for something, whether it works, I don't know, but I'm going to try it. Right. This is helping me try stuff mm-hmm. more than I never th- saw that coming, you know? Right. I, I, I just, a year or two years ago I wouldn't have saw that you know at all so <laughs> what's that thing I don't know it's like he does something just, like, <laughs> just <laughs> bite. I don't know just biting we bite you bite? Bite. I don't yeah. bite him but we just yeah. like I don't know I'm just like how biting. did that start I don't know I don't know, know. <laughs> yeah I feel I like know. it's a loving thing yeah it's yeah. a love bite yeah. it's like my yeah I don't know it hurts <laughs> love bites love bites love Love bites. That's a, is that a song? Yeah. If it's not, we need Def to write. Come it on. Is it a is? Def Leppard. It's a Def Leppard song. Yeah. Well, it, it should yeah. be, Come and on. it should be. Thank yeah. God the universe didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank God the universe yeah. didn't let us down on that one. But it's. it's I want to understand your fear of of art. Yeah. Did you like in Pearl Jam? Let's say, did you have artistic ideas and were always afraid to express them? And and Probably. at home, would you paint as well? Or no, you I were never were Always painted. afraid of it. I, afraid of it, or just. Yeah, I just never felt that I could do it. Or like I'd look at it and I'd immediately go, oh, that's dumb, you know? And it was just immediately a judgment of, a negative judgment of my talent in terms of painting or like that, or drawing. I, I just judged it immediately. And then that would, when you do that, it just makes you not do it, you know? And it's just, it's, it's, it's a sad thing to do. You know, and he's such and a natural painter. He's so like his his yeah. gestures and his. It's like he's such Which an artist. It's crazy. Did like, not know this. Yeah, so. like he mm-hmm. did this beautiful piece one day at the warehouse with these red lines, and it was just like, oh my! Like to see this come out of him, 
it's like so it's like he has he should be doing it one million percent it's so natural and it's yeah, so you in look him. like a painter it's man. like beautiful I, I've, he's like a paint he's a I, painter you have like an arty vibe i I've, i'm in thank you i'm yeah. going no, i'm going a, but i feel like i just did, never had the confidence to do it and i don't know what the reasoning was is i was around a bunch of better artists or artists in general than i just didn't but your photographs that's art and mm-hmm. you put out a book yeah it seems like how and, and that's that this i've been doing for 25 years so it's like and that and that Maybe I kind of built that up and went, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. And I'm comfortable in this. I'm comfortable sitting in my pile of Polaroids. Yeah. But, um, but even, yeah, even painting on that, it was, that, was a, that was an interesting jump of a leap of faith. Yeah, you decoupage yeah. the mannequins. He, covered, yeah. he has these beautiful mannequins back in Seattle. He covered them. I took Polaroids of her or whatever, and then I put them on the man. He covered know, mannequins yeah. with me. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Polaroid mannequin. Something like that, yeah. That so. could be a band name. Polaroid um, mannequins. <laughs> they're going to see Polaroid mannequins. Are you tonight. seeing the Polaroid mannequins tonight? They're, they're going at 3 a.m. They're playing Love Bites. Yeah. <laughs> love bites. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's wild stuff. I forgot I had a question, but then I just spaced on it. Later era Def Leppard. No. Yeah. <laughs> I know it because I was way into the, yeah. Yeah, you, into the first song. Are you record. intimidated to present song ideas in Pearl Jam as well? Or is that what you're talking about? Less, or just more uh, visual? Or? Over the years, bef- prior, yes. Yeah, I was. Uh, less now. Now I kind of just do it and go, well. Yeah. I think everybody comes in. Initially, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the first three records, I was like, these you, guys all write so good. And Jeff wrote this. And the, I, I, I just like I just want to be a lead guitar player, and it was probably I the see. path of least resistance yeah. in terms of how my personality is. And I think it was it took getting getting clean a long time ago, and that was the whole of like, oh okay, I can actually do stuff now, you know. Yeah. And I, I think that that part of that addiction or whatever I had back in the, in those days, and that was something that kept me out of having any kind of confidence or any kind of, right? You know, it beat me down. So. And it then around our for, for getting back in the band kind of stuff, the f- fourth record is when I started writing songs and and then I, oh I can do this you know and then Mad Season was another project and when I I think it took me getting clean back then to do that yeah so you know? your sobriety is like able enabled your blossoming as an for artist for sure for sure yeah a hundred percent looking it, looking at it in twenty twenty. 2020 vision right you know? and then the demons or whatever the or the the self-doubt and the questioning over the years even when i'm still in that is just old ways of thinking coming back right and and those old ways i'm trying to undo or undoing by doing this project or and then what do you do what what are you some of the things that you do when those demons come like how do you recognize talk, them you or write a song about it or write, mm-hmm. try to write it down in a journal or you know meditate about it or pray about it or what anything or turn it into a song Mm -hmm. to the best of my ability or you know or 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 sometimes go to one of those 12-step programs you're talking about but no i do do that so i i do that too um so all of those things you know whatever's positive to utilize darkness and to walk with it and learn from it i'll do now yeah and I, i guess i have more i know how to do that better now and i'm i'm yeah. Back 20 years ago, not not as much. Right. So it's fascinating this journey of life, isn't it? Just being it is. a human being and dealing with all this stuff and or know. self-created stories too. You know. Yeah. It's just strange. It's wild. I feel yeah. like you guys need to make some kind of book album type of situation to like release this in a way that people could sort of take it in. We talked about You're that. You're talking. Yeah. We're just talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Polaroid Mannequin would be a good name for a book. That's a great book title. Yeah. Well, we were saying we have yeah. so much work. We've created so much, like... Yeah. In the first six months. It was yeah, it's been crazy. Now. Every day, like, eight hours working together for six months, and then after that, more, you know, still working, but not as intensely. But we have a lot of work, and we were just talking about a book before we left Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that would be fun, especially, I mean, we have all kinds of new material now, too, from yeah. New York. Have you done a book? <laughs> no, but I need to do that too. I've done like kind of, mm-hmm. but I, I want to do that. I write poetry too, so I would like yeah. to do some kind of poetry art book situation. What do you think's more expensive, Mike? 
art supplies or guitar supplies? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like, well, it depends on the... <laughs> It seems like art supplies are kind of expensive. Yo, uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, blitz, dude, yeah. it's like the craziest <laughs> yeah. expense to be an artist. Like the confidence of like buying all that stuff. It's no joke. It's no joke. Like the, the pens that you brought, those oh, yeah, ones are those pretty spendy. They're, 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 yeah. they're spendy, yeah. yeah. It's all spendy. But you so are your guitars, Michael. Yeah. They are. That's why I brought that up. Yeah. Um, well, guitars. You probably get given them <laughs> now, but. No, no. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Luckily, I've been able through the gracious so world of the band. And we, it's, I've been, been, been able to buy some nice ones. I yes. heard a funny story about you, though. That, uh -oh. Like, uh, yeah, this uh -oh. is kind of uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> we can. By the way, we can edit anything. No, out I want this, this all to be too, a, too gotcha. I don't mean it that way. It's all for you. It, it's a funny. You it's a funny story, though. But like, I just I, hope I didn't ruin it <laughs> earlier by. Oh, I, hope, I hope that we got that stuff, but we could redo that. Okay, but. uh I heard that yes. like Fender was giving like back in the day Fender was giving you like uh, do you know like <laughs> no tell it tell it Fender, was, Fender, Fender yeah. was giving you tons of guitars and yeah. and and Mike was like you know doing the kind of the who thing and, so, and yeah. thought that they were like sort of just like you know basic Fender guitars was no big deal if he did the who thing like smashing the guitar up yeah. and apparently like he smashed up like a bunch of them Stratocasters and they were like super rare super <laughs> top of the line like yeah like it actually to the point where fender won't give them guitars now because of that they probably yeah. will now but like i, uh, I was, was like definitely thing. i didn't realize that to the extent of how i, I didn't realize they were very nice <laughs> like, newer guitars and, like, yeah like, I was just say I wasn't realizing a bunch back then, but yeah. I did like to break some shit. That's for yeah. sure. I yeah. still, you, why can't we do that now? What do you mean? Well, we can, but, but we can smash just mannequins. Yeah. And, you know, I always want to, I you always do end up smash, We do smash mannequins. I know. We should More. smash. We at you. Yeah. But if, I feel like if I smashed a mannequin, yeah. it could like come back to haunt me. Like, look at his anger. He's smashing a mannequin. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? Like, well, they just fall apart. You try and or move you get them. your anger out of them. Yes, well, you try and yeah. move them. They fall apart. They're very yeah. difficult. They're very difficult to put together. So then you just end up wanting to break Just them. like my ex girlfriend. Yeah. Boom. No, just just to see, set I, that one right up. See, set it up yeah, for you. Like, but I did. Talk about that. I apologize, Fender. I did not realize what I was doing then. I kind of did know what I was doing. And then I didn't care. And I was just like, this is. We're, everything's taken off and I love breaking stuff and I'm probably lubricated alcoholically back then <laughs> and you know yeah. so it just it, well, it was all part of it but so that is a true story that's a funny yeah. one yeah what, I wish what, I still had some of those what are you playing now all kinds right all You're, stuff you know I've Les I've, Paul. Les Paul, I've got a I've got some a lot of vintage stuff that I love and I'm lucky to have a I got a 59 Les Paul I love and um, a 59 Strat I love the word 59 of it you know the, word, the number 59 um so those era and a telecaster i play um and a lot of acoustic around the house you know yeah and gibson dove or the whatever mick and keith used on exile and the pictures of the exile yeah. I, that's what i want to use it's like just because mm. of that mythology but i also like those guitars and the one too. with the stars on it is cool too that's the everly, the everly brother yeah, yeah everly like brothers model too. acoustic it's pretty cool what are so. you using? Whatever he has. Whatever he has. <laughs> Did he give you one to take home? I have one at yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. I have. Give a Les Paul. Don't smash it. Yeah. Don't smash it. Put some paint oh, on it. Oh, and I drew all over she one did draw, of them. Yeah, Which on my one draft, is that? It's a, a Jeff Tweedy um, so uh, S, L, uh, Gibson SG. Uh -huh. And she drew on drew some cool stuff on it. So, I yeah. like SGs. It's yeah. blue. It's I'm so in a band with Peter Buck, and he got me, I think for my birthday or something, he got me this gold sparkle SG. Nice. It's like, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. He's really? like, yeah. And he was like, you need a, you need a signature. He's like, you need a, you know, a signature guitar. I forget how he said it, but you need a guitar. That's like your guitar. And, his, and he gave me that. Yeah. He's a rhythm master that man. Dude. And every time I try to compliment him, compliment him on that via text or something, yeah. he's just kind of, he's kind of dismissive of it uh -huh. or I, not, not in a bad way, but just kind of like stop. But he's just, I would say, in terms of maybe he's underrated as a guitar player because he's such a maybe he doesn't do leads or something like that mm -hmm. as much but he's such a rhythm player and a songwriter and yeah love him musical really yeah. like musical riffs yeah like that are jangly really, yeah 12 string stuff to music yeah yeah so. we just made our second record nice it's, it's it came out really good when's it coming out i don't know yet but um who else is playing on it Linda Pittman on drums, Scott McCoy on Scott. bass, 
Um, Scott McCoy is doing okay too, Greg which Foreman is thank God on keyboards. Yeah. 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 Scott McCoy I used to buy records from at Cellophane Square Records back in 1978, 79 when I was a young boy. Where in Seattle? Yeah, in Seattle. Is that where you grew up? I grew up in Seattle, yeah. And they had this the great record store called Cellophane Square that had bootlegs and stuff like that. And Scott McCoy worked there at the huh. time. It's before his Young Fresh Fellows kind of thing. Right. He was kind of the he was the nice guy at the record store. He wasn't one of the kind of the dicks that would be at record stores sometimes. Right. They were like why of course you should be buying this why are you buying that yeah. he's very helpful and cool dude so did, would, did he record store mentor you kind of or not really in hindsight yes in hindsight yeah. no for sure because it was a great story it's the first time i ever saw bootlegs was at cellophane it was this kurt block took pictures of cheap trick and he'd sell those there and oh really yeah it was the whole thing it was a little scene it was a big deal to go you know when you first discover music you're like yeah. i'm taking the bus i'm gonna go to the four record stores on the ave and be there all day with my friend danny and it was Cellophane you, was the cool one. So you think that helped you like discover your musical yeah. voice by growing up in Seattle and around that kind of energy? For sure, yeah. It, that or just getting a guitar when I was 11 and then just starting... I started playing in a band when I was 12 and then that's all I ever did. It was just kind of... We, right. we were my warrior and we would play... You know, we'd play shows in eighth grade and seventh grade and dances and did a rock and all i did i play that's how i learned how to play guitar was, was playing with other people I interesting think. So, I and i took lessons like, a little bit too but i mostly that kind of thing and, and then, some great pictures and i saw those albums shadow lot, yeah. and like he had some a lot of spandex going on i had some oh, yeah. spandex who were baggy on me i was so skinny <laughs> i had baggy spandex and braces so i like the way you yep. looked uh like uh when i first saw pictures of pearl jam I felt like you were the one I could relate to because I'm from Ohio and you had like a little stash and had long hair. Yeah. And I'm like, that dude looks like somebody I grew up with. Nice. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I was trying to have a mustache for sure. I definitely had a partial mustache for my entire no, that, life. That's the stoner stash. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Clearly that's what it was. You, 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 you nailed it, Joseph Arthur, stoner, right yeah. on the head. Stoner stash. Mike. Yeah. Another name for a band. Stoner Stash. <laughs> and the Opening for Polaroid Man. Yeah, no, Stoner Stash is the leader of the Polaroid Mannequin. It's Sto Stoner Stash and the Polaroid we're, Mannequin. One of them is, we're going to yeah. give a mustache to that guy. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He's always Stop. late for practice, too. Always. Just always. Yeah, so Stoner bare. Stash, yeah. he's just like barely shows <laughs> barely up. He shows up at the gigs lately. He yeah. You know, and we're lucky when he shows up for those. <laughs> just, yeah. When did you start painting, Kate? Um, You know, I started painting. I think, you know, I was always painting, but I didn't seriously start painting or decide that I was like, I'm going to be an artist until after, I guess I was 20. I went to Paris when I was 20. Wow. And From where? it changed everything. I was in, I was in, uh, I was in school at University of Maryland. Okay. And I had kind of had a rocky start, you know, school. I was not confident enough to say that I wanted to be an art studio major. I was an art history major. and I see. I'd, you know didn't have a lot of direction but i went to paris where'd you grow up i grew up all over the place but mostly miami i was in miami from oh, like okay. fifth grade through 11th grade uh-huh before that texas so born in princeton new jersey yeah miami, miami kind of. riding my bike to the beach and so what made you go to paris so i just didn't really feel like i had found my people or my world like i just i saw a brochure actually is what happened i saw this thing like you can study abroad in paris and i was like maybe it just I was like, I need to do this. And my parents were like, all right, if you can figure out a way to make it all, you know, your credits work and everything, fine, go. Mm -hmm. And I just felt it was one of these things. I just felt like I need to go do this. And I went to Paris and I met this guy, David, who is this, I saw this skater boy like sitting by the fountain. It's always a guy it's named a beautiful David. David. <laughs> and I met David and I started photographing him. And, you know, my friend, Athena, I just, i met all these artists and people in fashion and models and create you know all these creative kids in Paris and I was so inspired when I left Paris that I was like I, I'm gonna make art and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do this thing so I got back to Maryland I changed my major to art studio and it blew the it, beatnik spirit into you like, Paris it's Paris it? is like think you're done and so yeah. yeah that's when I was like I'm gonna do this and then Went on to graduate school after that, then moved to New York. and So you stayed in school? I stayed in school. I, once I got, you know, it yeah. was tricky to get into school, but then once I figured out my thing with the art, I was like, I did a master's in Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, then I moved to New York, did another master's degree at School of Visual Arts, um, and I just was like became the mistress of art. Yeah. And you worked for? 
Oh yeah, I mean, I was I was David Byrne's art assistant and oh, okay. worked with him, made an, an album called "Look Into the Eyeball" with him, and a book called "The New Sins." And wow. it was really great to work with him. And I was what's the cover of "Look Into the Eyeball"? It's like an eyeball. Yeah, that, it's like that a, makes sense. I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's an eyeball. It's the back there's of an the eyeball. Head. Look into the eyeball, yeah. and it's yeah. a nose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> contemplate that for um, days. Co- yeah, let's <laughs> contemplate that. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like it was an, like this. Uh, yeah, but that was like a very uh, an amazing experience. You know, just working with him in the studio, and he would come in and tack up all these photographs, and was very open to discussing the process of making books and music. What'd you learn from him? I just learned, um, that's a good question. I think I did, he had a, a level of vulnerability and um, he was okay with, he was patient and he was um, very open to, you know, just stepping, like to, to looking at things um, from multiple angles and from you know, just the process. He, he just taught me about... Um, trying to figure out how to say it yeah I, he just I think I just learned about the artistic process and about I don't know being you know editing and getting feedback from people and just being open you know he just it was like this is David Byrne but he was just very open with me and I was you know, just yeah he's just open and very kind and very you know I was just like this girl who had just moved to New York and my video teacher at SVA was like, you know, had made some videos with him and he was just very nice to me. And, you know, it's like, he taught me like, be a good person, be cool, be open, be, you know, generous with your work. And it was very, it was a very good experience. That's cool. I'm going to be her agent for a second too, but she yeah. also did some stuff at the Ace Hotel as you did. Yeah. yeah. So there's you know, an Ace connection, but you know, Cole Hahn, Ace, Cole Hahn, you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was, I did a good amount of commercial work when I was, when you lived here, when I lived here too, because I was having kids, you know, I have kids and life and, you know, so it's like, me you can, I start off making stuff in galleries here, and then I made a documentary about, you know, Zach Posen and Jemima Kirk and a bunch of these kids that, I know Jemima. you know, you know, Jemima, yeah, yeah so I was documenting That's all these so funny, kids small back world. in the day, and, you know, it's called Ben the Eye, I never I released it, I was wondering it, if there was a connection in here somewhere, so That's crazy, yeah. yeah. Like Theo Wenner and this kid Alex Burns. All these kids, it was right before 9-11 and after 9-11. I was filming everybody for about two years for my thesis documentary. And what's and that called? It's called Ben the Eye, and a lot ben of that footage is in the Zach Posen documentary that came out last year about huh. his career called House of Z. Um, but I didn't ever do anything with that documentary because after I made it, I don't know, like Jemima went on to do Girls Girl. and, you know, all these, and Pop de la Huerta is in it. Um, a bunch of different people, oh, okay. but I just filmed for about two years in New York. I, I, yeah, I, li- I know that sort of New York that, era. Mm-hmm, kinda. That's. And then you went to Seattle. Yeah, what, two years ago. Why? I went to visit my sister, and it was just a sister visit. And the, literally the first night that I was there, I was like, "This is where I'm going to move." Why? It was a feeling. Just a feeling. Yep. And I called my husband, and I was like, "I don't know if I'm just having a great time with my sister, or whatever, but like, there's something about this place." I, it's magical to me. It just was one of these things. Just like when I met Mike, and you're like, I know I'm going to work with this person, or I, that you know we have this energy together. It's just the same kind of, you know, I don't know. You guys know that thing, like when you feel something's right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And your husband was cool yeah. with that movie. He, he came and had this. He was like, I get it, you know. And he'd been in New York since '97. And what a cool dude. He's amazing. Yeah. Shout out to your Shout husband. Shout out to Tom. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty wow. cool. And so, do you still have that special feeling about Seattle? Yeah, you're and still now it's even it? got it's evolved more. I mean, because like, look what's happened. Like, you feel yeah. these things. You're like, I'm meant to be here because these things are supposed to grow in my life. Yeah, that's super interesting. And I think we we were talking when we first met about what is the art scene in Seattle? Is there one that goes on like there is in New York? Because in my mm-hmm. mind, what in New York is, you know, what you I've, do, and there's it's huge. I was huge just about and it's to bigger. ask you. I feel like you need to have a New York period. That's why I'm I saying want, that I'm like, like, you, like, like I feel right? like, yeah, I feel like you would Time. thrive right? in yes. New York. I, I have a had way. a lot of New York period. I, I yeah. really, I loved, I would love to do that. Yeah. I did yeah. spend a lot of time here at, in the nineties for sure. Like, yeah, but I, I mean, but, this are incarnation yeah, of you, exactly. mm-hmm. this is a different you. I, oh, for he's sure. He's so yeah. simpatico with New York. Oh, yeah. I love it. I can't. No, yeah. You're a vibe in New York. Oh my mm-hmm. God. I just, it's just so much going on and so much influence and 
I feel like there's going to be a New York book or something or yeah. a new inspiration. I can't here. stop. Yeah. You know, like there's this, and then there's why is there? Why does like? Why do I care about that? I, You're more New York than anyone else here, bro. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> not just saying that. You oh, really man, are. I, I just that's me. I just want to be. I think that's yeah. what it is. And I, I, it's it's fun. It's a phenomenon to me. It's you know, it's the it's the it's the it's the it's the dream. It's the it's the you know the whatever it is it's the darkness it's the lights everything about new york it's the music an, it's an emotional place new mm -hmm. york it's so, so it's, it's so emotional, emotional. it's like <clears throat> it just all the streets are emotional it's like yeah. you could walk down one block and mm -hmm. go and encounter like 50 different emotions like it's viscerally yeah it's it's so amazing for that energy mm -hmm. like you could it, it, it takes but it gives you energy and there's so too. much diversity too yeah it's just and it's just in the, and beautiful and their influences from that and it breaks you know, your heart too. It's like I, I yeah. now I go back on streets. I'm like I remember like oh, yeah. something about my kid or like that's when I first met. You know, it's just like there's yeah. all these memories. It's like a that's when that bastard pool, said yeah. this to me. And yeah. that's, you know, <laughs> totally yeah. all these yeah and mm -hmm. for sure it's all in there and actually that's part of what we're doing tonight. You had a spoken word thing that we did just last minute when we were rehearsing for this. It mm -hmm. just kind of came out of nowhere and she was off the top of your head go ahead you're no you're, i just like had this telling music, those stories but you're telling just new york stories and he's playing guitar and i just cool. we're gonna do it tonight yeah okay yeah. cool i'm gonna like it's only happened once before, it's only happened it was once just like we oh my like, god we have to do that do you, whatever you just said it wasn't scripted or anything it was just in there and came out it's like, it's like what we're talking yeah. about like these this new york okay emotion new york energy, energy feeling these moments and things that stick with you and yeah. they, they're coming out and i'm just playing because of him. whatever you know whatever it'll be different than what we did that night another know? way then, this thing could evolve too is like getting some kind of factory it doesn't have to be in new york it could i mean you know like some kind of space mm -hmm. could be in seattle that's yeah. what josh from the chili peppers was saying we were talking about yeah, it was like, like it'd be cool just to have a space if people like could a drop space, into space like yeah. that was like sort of mm -hmm. factory-esque you know that could yeah something for like sure. that maybe a collective we right? should do a kickstarter and see I kind of like it. And, yeah. get, and get and do some kind of collective. Because everybody has yeah. their projects and things going, but it's nice to have this other a home base, home base yeah. like this place that we can all come back to. Or if like if he's doing his thing, you get an idea. I don't know. I just well, and the work can live somewhere. The work can live somewhere. Because that's the problem with art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> no, yeah. and his his studio is getting filled. You know, yeah, yeah. it fills up. up. How much is your, you have a, your, uh, your, I have two yeah. storage spaces and two, you know, I paint in the basement of where I, yeah. in the club of where mm -hmm. I live, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, I find spaces yeah. and, and like I get <clears throat> blessed, you know, I, 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 Ashley and I want one of those pieces. Okay. We want to buy something from you and That'd just be great. whatever mm -hmm. you got, we want to, whatever yeah. you feel like uh, we would love to have some of your art I for could, our house. I could show you some pictures. I got some new stuff. That I, I love it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so yeah, cool. We'll make that happen. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, should we break for sound yeah. check and then if they're ready, I guess. Yeah. Do we say we got it more in case the first whole thing is gone. <laughs> so unless you cut it now, we have Go. a half hour. <laughs> oh my God. Can I, um, can I just ask yeah. one random question? Because no. something that you yes. said earlier. It's got to uh, be a specific you, you, pointed question. Yeah, I can't it's be you be mentioned, bro. You mentioned bootlegs. And, yeah. and I was a huge fan of bootlegs growing up. It changed like everything for me. Mm -hmm. And as someone who collected bootlegs and then was in a very successful band, what was your take when people started bootlegging you? Were you against it or for No, I was, I was into it. Um, I, probably more of an ego, like, oh, the, you know, checking it out or like listening to it and um, back in the day. But no, I, th I thought it was all part of the, the, the process. Like, oh, I guess that we're bootlegged too. And, but I still want to get that one's up in one where he's writing that one song that he never put out called Swan Song, which is mm -hmm. actually something that Jimmy Page did, which is amazing. That they never put out really but yeah it's a i'll see if i can find it i'll send it to you but um okay it's just a it's a song that they never put out which could have been totally amazing too but right. at any rate so i had that mindset i would come into the tower records here uh in the early 90s when we were touring here and i'd go and i'd see all the tapes on the side and i'd go through them. it yeah i get the, whatever stevie ray vaughn i could find or i love stevie ray vaughn yeah i got to see him four times luckily so i got to open up for him twice oh my god wow. yeah i was so in a, i was in a blues band in high school called frankie star and chill factor we were a really great rock and roll blues band did you play bass i played bass awesome yeah and so we opened up for stevie ray once at the nautica and once at uh oh my god. veterans memorial in columbus or cincinnati in cincinnati yeah 
Yeah. Was he three piece back then or four? Was it? <clears throat> it was like sober era okay, so Stevie four, Ray Vaughan, yeah. and yeah. he yeah, and he was doing like that talk in the middle, like with the, he would go into Lenny. that ripping solo where he would talk to the crowd. Oh, yeah. about his journey and yeah. recovery. I mean, what a beautiful spirit that guy was. Oh, yeah. He there was one time uh, I think oh, it was Columbus Veterans Memorial, and a veteran came up to him, and uh, like had on two crutches, and um was so nervous this was like after sound check he was so nervous that his crutches fell oh my God. and it was this awkward moment and stevie ray just looked at him and said i bet you love the sound of that don't you oh, wow and it was the mo- it was just beautiful it was like yeah. whoa like dude and then the guys like smiled and said yeah i do because the sound of his crutches Crutch falling it's mm. just like Wow! Damn, bro. How are you? You are more soulful than most people, yeah. dude. Like <laughs> to look at it that way, dude. Yeah. Right, and yeah. to convert it on a dime like that, yeah. and to make that guy smile. No, that's that. That it was just like, it was mind blowing. I love that. Yeah, I love hearing anything about Stevie. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and and we had a gig on the first night we opened up for him was Cleveland at the Nautica and we had a gig that night. It was Friday night. We had a regular gig at Kindler's in the flat. So we had to jet right yeah. after we opened for him. He had one of his guys and Frankie stars like sick guitar player. Amazing. Yeah. And he had one of his roadie guys or something, somebody who worked for him dry, like go to the, where we were playing the club where we were playing to give Frankie a note that said, uh, you're an inspiration. Right. Like to to wow. to and Frankie was like we were like yeah. kids like Frankie was like eighteen I was like seventeen, awesome. yeah wow. <laughs> it was like fucking mental. I love that I love that story. The reason I qu- I quit playing music for a while and um I would move to Los Angeles in 1986 and with my band Shadow I lasted for about a year down there mm-hmm. and we paid to play you know just it was just I got Crohn's I got sick so and, and um wasn't taking care of myself very well. I was 21 and mm. I ended up moving back to Seattle. I quit, I quit playing music because I was done. I was like, I can't, we're never going to make it. I got to do something else. And, and um, I went out to the Gorge because I kind of like, was starting to like the blues a lot at that time with some friends, but I had stopped playing music. I was done with guitar. I was like, fuck it, I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Super depressed. Took some acid with some friends of mine and we went out and saw Sue Ray Vaughan. And, and the next morning I went, the next morning that I was, because I was still up, you know, right. I was like, I got to start playing music again. And so that's my one good kind of LSD yeah. trip was like, oh, I saw Stevie at the Gorge, which is the most beautiful place to see a show, I think, in the world, um, over the Columbia River. And I remember him playing Couldn't Stand the Weather. Mm-hmm. And and I wasn't tripping hard. I was, but, but the, the, an actual <laughs> cloud came over and it started <laughs> raining and then it stopped. And that I think that really happened at any rate. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it didn't really happen, but it did in my it mind. Was transformative. But I remember driving back home with my friends, and I was in the back seat, and I listened to Machine Gun from <clears throat> Band of Gypsies, and I just went, and like the next day I went, I guess I start playing guitar again. Wow! So it was this yeah. combination of Stevie and LSD and all that that got me playing again, which is I've yeah. never talked about the LSD part before, but that was well, LSD. I mean, Bill Wilson was way into it. I know they tried to talk that down, but Homie was like, he was into it. He was yeah. dropping acid, yeah. like and was you know, or you know, and and counting it as and not ca- counting it as sobriety. Yeah, you know, which I can, s- you know, I, there's a million ways to get sober. So I don't, I don't judge anybody on that. But <laughs> I it, agree. it's interesting. It's like. At that time, I think it was more of a psychological thing. Right? Tim, what yeah. they did, the creating it in Harvard or wherever the fuck they came right, up with right. it. So yeah. he probably looked at it in terms of, of like healing, I guess. Of course. I would imagine. And what is there's, but That's a valid way of yeah. looking at psychedelics, I think. I think so, too. You know, they can be, yeah. they can definitely lead you astray, though, as well. For sure. You know, I'm not like one of these, like, oh, psychedelics are always a good idea. No, no. But they often are a good idea and, and like i hear stories like that more often than not like yours which is obviously that was a good thing that like, was a good one there was yeah. times when it wasn't and everything turned into a cartoon and i was working at a restaurant and it's just yeah. like whoa why am i doing this but <laughs> right. that's totally my that's my personality though it's like if yeah. one's good i might as well do 100 <laughs> right <laughs> just like the mannequins one mannequin's good mannequin arm's good let's get 10. Where, so, are you, where are you getting the mannequins? I can't answer that okay. question. Yeah. Ground it may or talk about it. Amazon. 
It might have been mail order. More buttons. And, but, yeah. Like when we started making buttons, you made so many buttons. Oh my god, I went insane. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's good it was though. Fun. That's when addiction is yeah. good. For no, when exactly. you so point it in the artistic way, but yeah. yeah, yeah, the whole Bill Wilson thing is funny with that. But just because there is a subset of like people in those rooms that are like the you know the big book thumpers or whatever mm-hmm. that have like a very stern outlook about sobriety, which is which I can't argue with, mm-hmm. but it's just so funny that the founder of it certainly did not have didn't that have the same stern grasp on it. I wouldn't think if he was. I would doubt it. Yeah, I don't. I can't speak for him or whatever. But yeah, I know I that story happen. too. But yeah. you know, I, again, that's it's it's whatever works for the individual is the way I look at it now. I guess it's like, kind of like Jesus too. Yep. Like, you know, like a lot of people take his thing and like run with it in their own direction. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a sort of a similar I thing. Like, like, yeah. like he was a hippie. Yeah. Though. I feel like he was pretty open-minded. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bill Wilson, yeah. thank you. But Bill yeah. Wilson is the Jesus of AA. I mean, He's, oops. I'm, it, you I, might have some people. Uh, yeah. I, you know, he, the, I'm glad he exists because I wouldn't be together. Oh, yeah, but, me yeah. too. But, I'm from Akron. Yeah, I know, Akron, Ohio. Yeah, we're, we're Devo all, and Bill Wilson. And, and yeah. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Bob. Bob. Yeah, all that. Yeah. I, I hate to be the one to do this because we could go on for an okay, hour. Okay, so I shouldn't walk they, around they, this no, way. I'm going to go you, this way. They need okay. you to sound check and maybe we'll continue... The podcast at the okay. end of the show somehow, and we'll piece it together. Yeah. Okay, and you're uh, gonna find out if we have that yeah, first bit. Yeah, after sound check. And I'm sensing a lot of confidence in his eyes on that. I line. know. I'm, I'm not loving it. it. No, okay, good. There's got to be file recovery, guys. Yes. There's got to be. There always is. It yeah. should. Be, it probably should automatically save. That thing looks a bit high tech. It looks. Yeah. Like, uh, it looks fancy. Like you didn't get the cheap one. I didn't, but. Um, I usually use a Roland, and I know in Roland you can recover. I don't know about Zoom, but we'll find well, out. We're gonna find we'll out. Find we'll find out. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Make it happen either way. It. Thank you. Thank Joseph. you. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you. All it's right. fun. Yeah. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out. Come to where I'm from. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated.